We are wrapping up Women's History Month by highlighting women's integral part in fighting the pandemic and improving health care in general. Our Kayla Schmidt reports. Across the mid-state, Family First Health is led by a team that is 89% women. You know, when I think about this, uh, this topic, you know, it's been front and center for me throughout my career. Jenny Angler, president and CEO of the health system, says when she first entered health care. I understood that the environment was uh, largely female dominated, but that leadership uh, in health care was still a uh, victim of a of a glass ceiling. A glass ceiling Anglerth broke. It's a great way to um, see an opportunity that as a working woman that you can continue to grow and develop into uh, a leader yourself. Which the women they work alongside of support 100%. Women naturally tend to have um, a higher emotional intelligence or some uh, piece where maybe they don't have to work at that quite as hard. And without offending the men in the room, Michelle Jordan, director of FFH operations, says that was crucial during the peaks of the pandemic. Women tend to be the caregivers. And so in our organization, we were really trying to make sure that we could continue to support women and, and that they didn't need to make tough decisions. Like leaving their job, taking time off when they already had and still have dying patients to care for. We can talk about our kids. We can talk about our struggles. We can talk about um, the, the challenges of whatever we're working through. And to other women-dominated workforces, CEO Jenny Angler says. Not to tear one another down or to find the weakness in somebody else and then exploit that. And I think that some of those behaviors in, in other environments are common and that that isn't part of our environment and that wouldn't work as part of our environment. Kayla Schmidt, ABC 27 News.